So I had to panic for a second. I really don't want to meditate. That for real got me sweating. This isn't cute. Um, I'll book it then. I'm not really a big museum person. That feels problematic. AI. Artificial intelligence. Honestly, AI has been such a buzzword lately. I feel like I've kind of written it off as like a passing trend, something only for the very technologically savvy. But as technology advances, we're now living in a reality where artificial intelligence might become part of everyone's lives, whether we like it or not. And it does have the potential to make our lives easier, plan routines and trips for us, answer questions, help spur creative ideas, and basically be our own digital assistants to guide us through life. So Rachel and I decided to see what it would actually be like to let an AI chatbot control our lives for a day. Good morning. Welcome to AI Controls My Life for a day. Good morning. I have no idea what I'm doing today. And that's like kind of weird, but really exciting for me because usually I'm like a very scheduled out person. But also it's like, it's good to get out of your comfort zone a little bit, try different things. I am a total AI novice. Before this video, I had never used a chatbot. Honestly, because it kind of overwhelms me. I think that's why I've been avoiding it. I don't know how it works. Like, I don't even know where to start, how to use it. It seems like a lot. So we decided to use the Snapchat AI because Rachel already had some experience with it and it's free, it's beginner friendly, it's accessible to anyone who already has the Snapchat app, which by the way, now includes me. I am now on Snapchat, so you can follow me there to see more of my daily life. It's Schultzy, but with two Zs, two E's. And when I went to set up my Snapchat AI bot, it allowed me to give it a name. So naturally I chose my one and only true love. Jeff Probst. So, sorry to Steven. He gets it. I mean, it's Jeff. <laughs> the thing that Steven explained to me about this tech is that AI is not a magic eight ball to tell me what to do. It can't make something out of nothing. The more information we feed it, the better its suggestions will be. AI chatbot technology operates on the principles of machine learning. So feeding an AI chatbot, or in this case, Jeff Probst, <laughs> feeding it more information provides it with a larger pool of knowledge and context. And this is a process that they call training the model. So as Jeff digests this data, its algorithms adapt and learn, allowing it to provide more accurate and relevant answers. So giving it more information ultimately enhances its overall performance as a virtual assistant. Today, Rachel and I are going to put it to the test. We're going to have AI walk us through a morning routine, getting ready for the day, do a little bit of work, go out and explore the cities that we live in. Rachel is in LA, I'm in San Diego, and both are tourist hubs. So we're hoping to get some good excursion recommendations. We'll have it help with our social media and then put us to bed for a good night's sleep. So Let's, let's see how it does. So let's, uh, let's start with our first question. All right, Jeffy Jeff, what am I doing with my morning? If you're looking to start your day feeling good and energized, you could try doing a quick workout in the morning or having a cup of coffee from your favorite coffee shop. I like both of those suggestions. Okay, let's ask Jeff where I should get coffee. <laughs> Better Buzz. I I like Better Buzz. It's like so overhyped in San Diego, but I do like it. I haven't been in a long time though. So that's a good suggestion. Okay. If you like espresso, you should try Better Buzz's Americano. It's a classic coffee drink that's made with espresso and hot water. All right. Okay, now a quick workout. As a woman in my 20s, is that gonna be like my go-to information to feed it with every question? If you're looking for a quick workout to do at home, you could try doing a 10 to 15 minute HIIT workout. There are many free videos on YouTube that you can follow along with. All right, well, we have our answer for the first part of our day. I'm gonna put on some workout clothes, we'll go to Better Buzz, and then we'll come back here and find a quick little HIIT workout. This is legitimately what I look like when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> and it is 9.30. I wanted to wait to start this video until my husband left for work, so that was my excuse to sleep in this morning. We are gonna start with a morning routine. Wake up at the same time every day. Whoops, did not do that today. Hydrate, okay. Stretch, that seems good. Meditate for 10 to 15 minutes. I hate meditating. And eat a nutritious breakfast. Oh my God, I really don't wanna meditate. I think I'm going to interpret that by 
doing a short yoga class because then I'm stretching and meditating at the same time. Boom. Um, and then eat a nutritious breakfast. Okay, that's not really specific. So I feel like I'm gonna ask it like. Oatmeal with fruit and nuts. Greek yogurt with berries and granola or avocado toast with eggs are all great options. Wow, this thing really wants me to go to the grocery store. I could probably make oatmeal with fruit and nuts. I usually make overnight oats with fruit and nuts, actually. That's what I normally have for breakfast, but I didn't prep any for today. So I'll make hot oatmeal, which I actually haven't had in a really long time, but that could be kind of fun. I think I'll go with the oatmeal option. Boom, we have our morning routine. And you know what's an important part of my morning routine every morning? Taking my vitamins. So we are so happy to be partnering with Care Of on this video. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality vitamins, supplements, and powders right to your door every month. They come in these individual daily packs, so it makes it super easy to take your vitamins on the go with you if you're heading out the door like I am right now. I'm super grateful to Care Of for partnering with us on this video. As you may know by now, I'm pregnant and my vitamin needs have certainly changed. I was able to take the Care Of quiz on online and receive personalized vitamins, including all the prenatal supplements I will need to make sure that I am feeling my best and taking care of myself on this stage of my life. I love that you can always retake the quiz as your lifestyle and your needs change. Their daily vitamin packs are also made with a plant-based compostable film to limit environmental impact, which is super important to me and amazing that they put the extra thought in. To get started, just take the care of quiz to get personalized guidance with doctor-backed recommendations. One of the vitamins care of recommended for me is a veggie omega supplement, which is great because I can get the omega-3s that are so important for your brain, eyes, heart, joints, but sustainably sourced from a microalgae since I'm vegetarian. And for 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code Sierra Schultze 50, or you can just click the link down in the description. That's takecareof.com with code Sierra Schultze 50. Thank you so much to care of for sponsoring. Now uh, me and my vitamins are off to better buzz. Can I do a better buzz Americano. I wanted to get breakfast too, so I asked the AI what I should get, and it said the avocado toast, which then when I went to order it, they said they don't have here. So I had to panic for a second. I was like, Jeff, tell me what to do. I asked for three breakfast options, and one of them was an acai bowl, which they did have. So I ordered that and the Americano. Kind of bummed that it recommended an Americano though, just because that's like so simple. And at Better Buzz, they have like so many fun, like exciting and unique coffees. Like the Americano is definitely like the, the most basic option. Thank you. Okay, acai bowl looks bomb. Americano looks like watery coffee, which to be fair is exactly what it is. It's fine, it's coffee. This acai bowl though, this, this excites me. Excellent. Mm. Thank you, Jeff Probst. Okay, better buzz. Good, good recommendation from the AI. Now, before I go home, I have another question for the AI that's uh, kind of fun, kind of different. Today is my mother-in-law's birthday and she loves poetry. And I've heard that AI can like write poems and like essays and stuff. So I thought, why not ask it to write a birthday poem for her? I feel like she would love that. I wanna give it, I wanna give it a lot of adjectives to describe her so that the poem can hopefully like fit her. Oh, she's gonna love this. This is like right up her alley. Here's a poem for your amazing mother-in-law, Lisa. Warm and loving, vibrant and true. Lisa, today we celebrate you. Your spirit is accepting and encouraging. Your zest for life is uninhibited and adventurous. You're an amazing mother and grandmother and we're blessed to have you in our family forever. May your birthday be filled with joy and delight and may your year be full of love and light. We raise a toast to you, dear Lisa, on this special day that's all about ya. Yeah. May your heart be filled with love and cheer and may you always know how much we hold you dear. I am so glad I decided to ask for this because I just know this is like, this is so her. Okay, I'm gonna send it in the family group chat, but also not trying to take credit for this. I said, Lisa, I had AI write a birthday poem for you with some of the words I used to describe you. Love you so much. Happy birthday. I think it's pretty accurate. I'm excited to see what his whole family says. Now back home to find a hit workout. Okay, I'm in yoga clothes. You can't really tell, but I swear I look cute. Step one, wake up. Step two, hydrate. Let's do step two. Okay, next up is stretching and meditating. The only way I know how to meditate is through yoga. Sitting in silence with my own thoughts is just putting me in a jail of my own demise. <laughs> but I love yoga. I used to be a yoga teacher. I worked at a yoga studio for many years. I don't have been doing it that much lately. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I even did my own flow. And I'll set a timer for 15 minutes and I'm just gonna do my own flow. Hold on, let me make sure I hydrate. 
Hey Siri, set timer for 15 minutes. That felt so amazing. Not this. That's good. Okay, the AI poem was a big hit with my mother-in-law. She loved it. I'm so glad I did that. And now I'm about to do my workout. I spent a while looking because a lot of the results weren't really resonating with me. I, a lot of the titles, I know it's because it's, you know, they want it to be clickable, but a lot of the titles are like fat burning, flat tummy. And it's like, I just want to move my body. So I found one by a creator called the Katrina Nicole. It's called Easy 15 Minute Plus Size friendly full body hit. So I'm gonna go with this one and here we go. Body and it's very high without having a high For real got me sweating. We did it, Katrina, we did. That was great, I really liked that workout. It was quick, it definitely got me sweating. Has my body feeling nice and warm and uh, energized for the day. So I'm really glad I found her. I'm gonna link her channel in the description. It was a very inclusive workout, had lots of modification options. And she just had, she had a great energy. It was a very, very good pick for me. So now it is time to go get showered and uh, get ready for the day. Um. Honestly, I can think of nothing less that I want to eat than hot oatmeal. It's like almost 100 degrees in the valley today. But the AI suggested it for a, what did I ask for? Energizing and productive morning. Which, by the way, so far, I feel has been half a cup of oats, one cup of lemon, and I'm going to add some cinnamon. Okay, how long do we think we microwave this for? I'm going to go with two minutes. That might be too long, but I feel like that's right. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Okay, yep, it exploded a little bit. Ugh. Fuck. I knew it was gonna happen and I still let it happen. All right, all that energized and productive feeling I was having is gone. All right, add the strawberries I have, add a handful of almonds. That is hot. Okay, and with this breakfast, once it's in my stomach, which will be in the next five minutes, I have completed my AI suggested morning routine. Let's figure out what I'm doing next. Okay, I washed my hair yesterday, so I'm just gonna take a body shower and then let's ask the AI for what I'm gonna do with my hair. There are many cute hairstyles for curly hair on the second day. You might wanna try a messy bun or half up, half down style. Both are really easy and look great. Okay, let's, let's narrow in on the half down style. Okay, we got a more specific answer. I'm so glad you asked. Here's an easy tutorial for a half up hairstyle on curly hair. Start by parting your hair down the middle. Take a small section of hair from the front of your head on one side and twist it back. Secure the twisted section with a bobby pin or hair clip. Repeat on the other side. Adjust the twists as needed to make sure they're even. Fluff up your curls and you're done. Next step in my day would be getting ready because I'm not gonna be walking around like this all day, although in most, in most days I would. But today, I'm gonna look pretty for you guys. So getting ready for the day. I feel like what I wanna ask it is today, I'm gonna be doing some work and I'm going to be going on an outing or something. What should I wear? It's really hot today. What are some hairstyles I can do to keep my hair off my neck? But I also have to tape an extension. Wear a light colored, loose fitting cotton shirt, shorts or a skirt, and a comfortable sandals or sneakers. Don't forget a hat and sunscreen. I love that. That's like kind of specific and I absolutely will wear that. By the way, not my normal style, but I didn't feed it my normal style. You know what I mean? Like I think if I had said like, I like to wear tight fitting crop tops and sweatpants, then maybe I would have, but then in that case, am I just making the decision for myself? I'm kind of glad I didn't feed it too much information about my personal style. I can take this kind of specific yet generic advice and turn it into my own outfit. And I like that it said, don't forget hat and the sunscreen. I never would, look at this skin. You think I can forget sunscreen? This is like a question that I ask myself every day. You can try a low bun, a fishtail braid, or a half up, half down style. I would love to do a half up, half down style, but unfortunately that does not hide my extensions. But the low bun is not a bad idea. 
Search for low bun tutorial on YouTube and follow along. Thanks. But I will, actually. Let's pick out my outfit before I jump in the shower. So, AI said wear a light colored, loose fitting cotton shirt. Hmm. It's not a big t-shirt girl unless I'm sleeping. Here's an option. And here's an option. This is a great shirt. I'm a beautiful butterfly. Yeah, all my shirts are Disney themed. Shorts or a skirt? All right. I have denim shorts, but if I'm being honest, I haven't worn them since last summer and I wouldn't be surprised if they just straight up don't fit. <laughs> nope. Yeah. So we're not gonna ruminate on that too long. Instead, I have these two, which this shirt, this beautiful butterfly shirt, which is 100% cotton, kind of matches these yellow shorts. I'm into that. And a hat. These are all my hats. Ugh. This is like a hat hat. Dole Whip hat, it's kind of cute. And then I've got this white Tulane hat. It's not bad. This, I'm going with a Dole Whip hat. I haven't worn this one in a long time. Okay, well, I can safely say this was not the outfit I would have worn today, but I like it. So let me go take a shower and then I'll meet you back up when I'm gonna do my hair. Okay, now let's, let's ask the AI for an outfit. Outfit. On a warm summer day in San Diego, you might want to wear something light and breezy, like a sundress or shorts and a tank top. Comfortable shoes are a must. Okay, uh, me, me and you both, AI. Especially if you're planning on doing a lot of walking. If you're going to be outside, don't forget sunscreen and sunglasses. Ooh, you know what's kind of interesting? What if I ask the same question, but then specify plus size? How will it change the outfit? You might want to wear something light and breezy like a sundress. Okay, same, but, but wait, they add, they did add something at the end. There are plenty of great options for plus size women, so don't be afraid to try different styles until you find something that you feel comfortable and confident in. That's great, I love that. Let's go, let's go for a light and breezy sundress. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Perhaps this one. It's light, it's breezy, it's a sundress, but it also has shorts. Okay, I'm super happy with my AI outfit. We've got the cute little sundress, the comfy shoes sunglasses, and I put my sunscreen on while I was doing my skincare. So I am ready for the day. Thanks, Jeff Probst. I'm showered, I'm dressed. He told me to do a low bun, and I also told me when I asked for suggestions to look up a tutorial on YouTube. It was like, I don't know, do it yourself. So, low bun with a hat on YouTube. This girl looks cute, Lainey Marie Beauty from three years ago. Hey guys, so today's video, yeah. I wanted to first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of pull out pieces in the front, rest of the hair in the back, and I'm gonna go ahead and put on my hat, do a little bun, but make sure that your hair is pointing up and cake this a little bit, and then I'm gonna take this hair that's left, I'm gonna go under the bun, and around the bun. Ooh. So I'm just gonna open up the hair tie, and stick it in. So what I like to do is- <laughs> Mine doesn't look like that. Hold on, I'm gonna try it again. Oh my arms are already tired. I'm so weak. I think I have too much hair. And then wrap it around. Okay, that feels better. I feel like with some bobby pins, I could make this be okay. Just have a really cute, messy bun. You don't do anything with the hair in the front? That's it? This isn't cute. I thought we were gonna do something, like pull it back or something. Now it's just like I left an enormous amount of hair out of my bun. I can't for sure say if this is cute, but it's definitely different than anything I've ever done. This is what hers looks like, and this is what mine looks like. Did I do it? I don't care if I did it, my arms hurt. <laughs> So I'm gonna have the AI plan like a fun little outing for me in the afternoon. But before that, I have a little bit of work I wanna get done. And I wanna see if the AI can help me with this. So first thing, I have some emails to send off. I wanna ask the AI for like a funny email signature. How about yours in procrastination or stay caffeinated, my friends? It's definitely unique. I'm gonna use yours in procrastination. Okay, this first email is going to like the whole team. It's about our rebrand photo shoot and like the color story for it. Yours in procrastination, Sierra. <laughs> Okay, I sent off quite a few emails with the yours in procrastination signature, but then I got to one in my inbox that's like a brand deal negotiation and like much more professional. And I felt like it maybe wasn't the best look in that to say yours in procrastination. Um, so I asked for a more professional recommendation and the AI told me best regards. So I use that. Now that I'm all ready for the day, I'm ready to do some work. I purposely move my editing schedule around. You know, typically I edit all of these videos and all of Sierra's vlogs, but I moved my schedule around this week so that I wouldn't have to edit today because I knew I was gonna be filming this. However, I also produce all of these videos. So one of the videos I've been working on producing for the last few weeks has been the burlesque video. And one thing that we always do when we have a video that includes an expert is interview them. I have been to a couple of burlesque shows in my life, but I don't know a whole lot about it. So I thought one of the things I could get the AI to do for me is come up with some interesting interview questions for the burlesque teacher for that video. That would actually be 
super, super helpful. I'm happy to use AI for work in this regard, almost like an assistant, an idea generator, a helpful brainstorming buddy. You know, in many ways, AI really scares me, especially as an editor. Obviously, AI is nowhere near where it's going to be right now, and AI cannot replace editors. But my best friend is a writer in the WGA, and right now they're on strike, and one of the big things that's concerning is the use of AI in our industry. And so AI definitely is on my mind when it comes to replacing artists, which I think is crazy because art really can't be replicated. But when it comes to something like this, where it's like not necessarily doing the work for me, but it's going to be helping me come up with ideas and brainstorm, I feel like that I feel a lot better about. So let's get started. Here we go. Can you tell us about your personal journey with burlesque? Kind of feels like a regurgitation of what I said. How do you make burlesque accessible to people of all ages, body types, and abilities? That one's interesting. How do you encourage body positivity and self-confidence in your students? That's definitely a question that I will, would, and will ask her. And I feel like that's one of the first questions where it's not just regurgitating what I said back to me. Can you share with us a memorable performance or moment in your career? I like that. How do you choose your music and costumes for your performances? That's kind of interesting. How do you balance the sensual and playful aspects of burlesque with the empowering message it conveys? That's an interesting question. How do you see the future of burlesque and its role in the entertainment industry? Ooh, okay. A lot of these questions were just regurgitating. Like, I wanna ask about the art of burlesque. What is the art of burlesque? Like, that's a little, okay. But some of these are actually really good. So I feel like I can take these and put them in my own words now and come up with a line of interesting questions for her. And now I'm gonna start working on the narration script for the Sunrise Swim video, which if you haven't seen that, link in the description. Um, but I thought it might be interesting to ask the AI some thought starter questions for that. Swimming in the ocean at sunrise can be a great way to start your day. Not only is it a refreshing way to wake up, but it can also help you feel more energized and focused through the day. Cool water can help soothe sore muscles and reduce inflammation. I didn't even think about that. Well, the early morning light can help regulate your circadian rhythm and improve your mood. Plus you'll get to enjoy the beauty of the ocean at its most peaceful time of the day. Okay, I didn't actually expect it to like give me an answer that would genuinely help, but it did. <laughs> now here's the thing, I know quite a few YouTubers and like big YouTubers who use AI substantially in their content creation process, like from coming up with ideas to scripting the full video to captions and titles and promotion strategies. Like people use it a lot. And I think some people are really open about it and some people aren't. And I feel like it can be a really helpful tool. Like even just that answer, I feel like gave me a lot to consider, but I can't imagine like using this as a script because it would just so clearly not be my voice. But I guess it probably depends a lot on like the content and the audience. Like I really like this thought starter and honestly I can see myself using this as a tool to like brainstorm and stuff moving forward. But like, I don't know, any further than that, I feel like it would feel kind of impersonal. <sighs> okay, now here's the big question. Where is AI gonna send me out of the house this afternoon. Let's find out. I know AI is a really common tool that people use for planning their vacations and San Diego is a pretty common vacation destination. There's a lot of great activities. So I'm hoping I get something fun and good and summery and I just have to make sure that I perfect the wording of this question to get something good, okay. Ooh, how about taking a stroll along the La Jolla Cove? It's a beautiful spot by the coast where you can enjoy the ocean views and take in fresh air. There are plenty of shops and cafes nearby where you can grab a bite to eat or a cup of coffee. There's so much to do in La Jolla Cove. I feel like, I feel like that's a good spot. I'm gonna try and ask some more specific questions of like what I should do in La Jolla Cove. Okay, I am actually so excited for my afternoon. The AI gave some great recommendations. So I asked for a vegetarian friendly lunch spot. It recommended Caroline's Seaside Cafe, which I have never been to before. I asked for some activity recommendations down there and it recommended a surf lesson, snorkeling, a sunset sail, a yoga class, or a bike ride along the coast. I'm kind of thinking bike ride, that sounds fun. I've I don't think I've like ever rented a bike down there and just gone on a bike ride, but that sounds cool. All right, I'm gonna pack a bag and let's get going. A little summer adventure. Here we go.
Okay, this lunch spot that the AI picked is definitely gonna be gorgeous. It's like right on the water, but I didn't realize it's basically like on UCSD campus. So I can't park in the lot because I don't have like a student parking pass. So I had to circle for like 20 minutes trying to find street parking. I finally found a spot and now we're gonna go check out this cafe. This is a beautiful spot. I have such like a picturesque view out here. The waves are rolling in, the surfers are surfing. It's really gorgeous. Um, I will say though, the menu here didn't have as many vegetarian options as I would have expected from the AI recommendation, but um, they did have a vegan avocado toast. So I got that, which I guess is full circle from this morning and not being able to get that. Got a green juice too, some yogurt. And when Steven went to school here, we probably walked by this spot like 50 times. We just never ate here. It is kind of expensive, but it's beautiful. Great recommendation on the atmosphere. Okay, the afternoon now and I finished all my work. This is the part of the video I've been most excited for because I do think that one thing that AI can probably do pretty well is plan travel. I actually used it a lot when I was planning my honeymoon a few months ago to come up with ideas for what to do in a bunch of countries I'd never been to and I actually found it really useful as like a travel assistant. So today we are going to travel in my own city, which is Los Angeles. I'm hungry for lunch, so I'm definitely gonna ask for a good lunch recommendation and let's go do something fun in LA. And it recommended Hugo's Tacos. I haven't actually physically been to Hugo's Tacos, but I used to work on a show in Encino and we would order Hugo's Tacos all the time. So, seems I'm going to Hugo's Tacos and I just asked what would you suggest I order and they say you might enjoy the grilled fish tacos or the veggie tacos with guacamole. Don't forget to order a side of their sweet potato fries. Sweet potatoes, one of my favorite foods in the whole wide world. I'm gonna sunscreen up, put on some sneakers, grab my wallet and go to Hugo's Tacos. Okay, I just got here. I found parking on the street, a genuine LA miracle. And also this is the first time I've left the house in days, truly. really good. I just finished having lunch. I did not order what the AI suggested that I order and I probably should have. I just got really, really excited because they had gluten-free breakfast burritos and breakfast burritos were always one of my favorite foods before I had my autoimmune diagnosis. Any other fellow gluten-free people will know it is so difficult to find a gluten-free breakfast burrito. At least it is for me. And so I got a little sidetracked when I saw that in the menu. Honestly, it wasn't that good. Probably should have stuck with what they recommended. I tried to order sweet potato fries. They go, oh, we don't have any. So I don't know what that's all about. I'm kind of tempted to do a crazy thing. <laughs> While I'm sitting here waiting for my food, I've just been, you know, Googling the other activities that the AI recommended just out of curiosity. And I saw online that the San Diego snorkeling tours has a leopard shark snorkeling excursion at 345. And it says there's still some spots left and to call. What if I just called Taylor up? What if I just called San Diego snorkeling tours up? I brought a swimsuit just in case. I guess it doesn't hurt to call. Hello, I was just calling to see if you had any spots available for the 345 leopard shark dive today. Just one. Oh, you do? Uh, okay, um, I'll book it then, I'll take it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. This is crazy. Swimming with the leopard sharks was on my summer bucket list and I haven't done that yet. It's perfect. And maybe a little bananas, but perfect. My lunch just got here. We've got the avocado toast, the yogurt. It's pretty good, super fresh. But I'm so excited. Like I'm so stupid excited right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm checking in for the 345 snorkel tour.
Okay, I just got done with the snorkel tour and well, tour tour is a pretty generous term for what that was. It was still really cool. I'm glad I did it. But basically the guide just took us out there a little bit past the break and then was like, this is where the leopard sharks hang out a lot of the time. They like to be in the sand, but don't get too close to the rocks or you could get hurt. Good luck. And then dipped and went back to shore. So it was just me and, and one other tourist in the group. So we were just snorkeling around out there. It was a beautiful day. The visibility wasn't great, but the water just felt amazing. I saw a couple schools of fish and mostly I was just enjoying being out there. It's so beautiful, so peaceful, but I did very much want to see a leopard shark and I was approaching the hour mark and still hadn't seen one. And I was like, oh, you know, it's probably about time to just call it a day. It's not in the cards. That's all right. And then right as I had that thought, I saw one. It was so magnificent. I was able to track it for a couple minutes and just swim over it and watch it. Such a cool animal and really, really made the experience feel worth it. I'm really glad I decided to do this. It's definitely not where I, my day would have gone if it wasn't for the AI recommendation. It is like literally a hundred degrees outlook. Let's go see what I should do to explore the city for the afternoon. I'm definitely going to ask it things to do that will keep me cool. It suggested that I go to the Getty. I, I'm not a really a big museum person if I'm being honest, but they said it's a great place to explore on your own and they have plenty of indoor exhibits to keep you cool. Ooh, the Getty Center Museum has a lot of great exhibits, but I would recommend checking out the Icons of Style, a century of fashion photography. That actually does sound kind of interesting to me. Okay, we're gonna go to the Getty. This is like wildly outside my comfort zone to be doing and doing this on myself, but it should be fun. Turning the AC back up. Okay, I'm here, I'm at the Getty, and I went to go ask a docent where that fashion photography exhibit is, and I said the full name of the exhibit as it was explained to me by Snapchat AI, and she goes, oh, um, well, we do have a fashion photography exhibit, but that's not what it's called. And she showed me where it was, and I said, thank you. And then I Googled it, and the <laughs> exhibit that Snapchat AI recommended to me was here five years ago. So AI really screwed the pooch on this one, but I'm happy to be here. It's gorgeous. It's super, super were crowded and parking was a nightmare but it's really beautiful and we're like up in the hills i had to take a tram up to get here i forgot about that and it's like breezy so this heat isn't even bothering me too much so i'm gonna go check out this other fashion photography exhibit which is called tim walker wonderful things and uh we'll go from there Well, that was actually really awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I've been in there for like 45 minutes. <laughs> it was a really good exhibit. I'm happy I went, but I'm here and I can't just do one exhibit. I will say the AI has already let me down once in terms of recommending it. I'm going to ask her it, what are the most famous works that I should see while I'm here. Okay, it told me to go check out the Van Gogh and Monet uh, paintings. Okay, after lunch, I went and took some Instagram photos and they came out really cute. So I'm gonna post them and I'm gonna ask the AI what I should caption it. Feeling salty and sandy, but it's all good because I'm by the beach. That's a caption, not one I would have written. Okay, can you try one that's more simple? Beach vibes. It's better than the first one, but still not what I would caption it. I'll take it, beach vibes post so i have all these pictures oh, sorry i have all these pictures that i took at the getty and i'm gonna post them on my instagram i think it'll be really funny to have the snapchat ai come up with the caption and the hashtags i'm not gonna lie i'm feeling lukewarm about the whole ai experience so far because i think it's given me some great suggestions that i've enjoyed throughout the day but it also lied to me about like the menu at hugo's and the exhibit at the getty so regardless let's see what kind of caption and hashtags it comes up with for my instagram post i took the a lot of pictures but the majority of the pictures that i want to post involve flowers from the garden plus the van gogh photo of the irises so 
I'm just here for the flowers, man. Or I came for the art, but I stayed for the flowers. I hate all of that. You come up with more. I hate this. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. If the flowers are Japanese, that feels problematic. Something shorter. Bloom where you're planted. I don't love it, but I'll take it. My God, I just really feel like these are terrible suggestions. <music> Flowerstagram, art and flowers, flower power. Those are the hashtags she suggested. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, let me post this. All right. I was so excited for something more interesting than that, but you know what? It's on the feed now. So it's a little after nine now. We had a really nice family evening and then I went upstairs and got a little more work done in my office after I put Grace to bed. And now I am ready to start my nighttime routine. I just... Don't know what it is yet, gotta ask Jeff. My good old friend Jeff, what do you have in store for me tonight? Not like that, but. <laughs> At first I was thinking relax, but I don't really feel like I need to relax tonight. Like I had a pretty stress-free day, it was super fun. You know what I do really need though? I need to sleep well tonight. I'm trying to wake up at six tomorrow. So let's see if the AI has any tips for that. Ooh, all right, we've got five steps. Put away your phone or computer at least an hour before bedtime to help your mind and body relax. Well, I'm, I'm, you're putting yourself out of a job, Jeff, but okay. Take a warm bath or shower to help you unwind and de-stress. I'm really glad it recommended that because I have not had a chance to shower yet after the beach and uh, I feel pretty grimy. Try to avoid caffeine or alcohol before bed as they may interfere with your sleep. No problem, check. Make sure your bedroom is cool, dark, dark and quiet to create a comfortable sleeping environment. Practice some deep breathing exercises or gentle stretching to help calm your mind and body. I hope this helps. It's almost six o'clock. Let's get the plan for the night set up with AI, <laughs> with me AI. Let's get the plan for tonight set up with my AI friend. I don't even know if she's my friend anymore so that I can get going. First things first, I'm gonna want something to eat always. So maybe I'm gonna ask it what I should order on DoorDash and then I'll just say what's a good nighttime routine and we'll see what it says. So let's start with dinner. Sun Cafe Organic Studio. Why couldn't you have just said McDonald's? I'm just not feeling that healthy. People always wrongly assume that gluten-free people want to be healthy all the time. Whoa, I spoke way too soon. This place looks great. Gluten-free mac and cheese? Okay, once again, the AI has failed me as I was about to place my order on Sun Cafe and it turns out they're too far for delivery for me. So I asked for another place and they recommended the Green Cottage, not on DoorDash. I asked for another place, they recommended the Good Pizza, never heard of it. Let's see if it's on DoorDash. It is not. That's the third place in a row they recommended that's not on DoorDash. So, I, you know, I gotta be more specific. And there you have it. They don't know any. I'm sorry for the confusion. I don't know of any restaurant in my neighborhood that offer gluten-free options and delivered through DoorDash. That's crazy because I know so many. This is not helpful. I'm personally just going to order a pizza and ask on my nighttime routine to move on from this utter frustration that I am feeling. Avoid using my phone or computer for at least an hour before bed. Dim the lights in my room, breathing exercises, read a book, listening to calming music. Okay, back where we started. It's nine o'clock, but I just brushed my teeth, washed my face, put on my pajamas. I turned on this lamp I have in my room, which we almost never use. We usually just use the overhead light, but it said dim lighting. So this felt more appropriate. I'm going to do some breathing, which is good. Thing I not, don't usually do. My phone is not near me. Another unusual habit of mine. And I have a book. I actually just finished reading a book, so I don't have a new one to start quite yet, but I just grabbed my favorite book of all time, which is Interview with the Vampire. I've just read it so many times, so I figured I'll just read a couple chapters of this. Because I said to put the phone away, dim the lights, do some deep breathing, read a book, and that's gonna be the end of my day. So let's do some deep breathing. That was almost like meditating, I'm not gonna lie, I hated that. I do feel nice and relaxed and I am very sleepy. Oh, I doubt I'll make it that far in this book, but I will try. Good night. You look so cute already in bed. Oh, thank you. I'm hoping to be asleep by like 10.30 tonight, but uh, sadly we cannot do our, our favorite thing of cuddling up in bed and watching Tiki Talkies <laughs> because the AI also told me not to look at my phone before bed, which you also always tell me. Yeah, I was gonna say, is this AI or is this Steve? <laughs> Sounds like you've been having a fun day. Yeah, it is really fun.
Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I'm like kind of sad it's over because I basically just got to go on like a fun adventure day and had no idea what was going to happen and it ended up being super fun and great. So do you ever think you would like ask it prompts outside of the context of a video? I think so. I think especially getting so familiar with it today, I feel like I know how to ask it questions now. Yeah, once you get the itch of like asking it questions, it's um, it's just interesting. Yeah, and before that, it, AI was just like a big scary unknown to me. It's a buzzword. Now interesting. I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Anyways. This has been AI controlling my day. Now I've got to listen to my AI and go to sleep. <laughs> AI or Jeff Probst? Jeff Probst. Because what Je if he was actually just on his phone typing you all day? Oh my God, don't tell me that. Now I'm going to be like all embarrassed. We'll, Je never, we'll never know. Jeff. We'll never know. I've got to say, diving into the world of AI chatbots was a wild ride. <laughs> Jeff had some interesting recommendations. Some really hit, some kind of missed, but most of them just fell somewhere in that middle ground. And it did genuinely help me try new things that I wouldn't have thought of and switch up my routine, get out of my comfort zone. I can totally see why this is such a popular tool for planning travel, exploring new places. When it comes to assisting with small work tasks and brainstorming social media ideas, I can see myself using it here and there for thought starters, but overall, it really didn't hit a tone that felt like my own voice. It sounded like AI, I mean, because it is AI, but this that artificial intelligence tone is distinct. And so I, I hesitate to use it too much for that reason. My AI day was fun yet frustrating. I think I can feel safe that the robots will not be taking over anytime soon if they can't even stay up to date on the current exhibits of a world famous museum or what restaurants deliver to me in the gigantic city of Los Angeles. I can totally see why it's so popular as a trip planner, but based on my experience today, definitely double check its recommendations before you go letting AI plan a whole trip for you. Honestly, talking to my AI bot felt more like talking to a slightly more intelligent smart child from AIM for those of us old enough to remember. It definitely had its perks, but if I had an assistant, I would not be firing them for an AI bot anytime soon. Well, thank you so much for following along on our days. This was such a fun video to film and it's fun to go back to the more like laid back vlog style videos like this every now and then. Let me know what you guys think of this tech. If you've used it, what has your experience been like? And if you haven't already, go check me out on Snapchat. I post more like behind the scenes stuff and photos there from my life that you won't find on other social media platforms. So thank you so much for watching. Be confident, be kind to your body, and I'll see you next time. Bye.